You know, a lot of people start off building a home lab and then a few years down the track, they go, oh, why did I do that? Or, oh, why didn't I do that? And they've made a mistake and then they have to go and fix that mistake and that's fine. What do you do when you make a mistake? You just learn from it, you grow from it and then you move on. I mean, that's the way that a lot of people learn, especially in technology. I learned the hard way many, many times. I once patched domain controllers in the middle of the day and I brought down the entire network. And I learned from that. I won't do it again. So in a home lab, you're probably gonna be playing around with stuff and you're gonna make mistakes. Now, before we do get into this, I want you to do one thing for me, one thing smashing that subscription button. Well, don't smash it. Just click on it with your mouse or with your finger if you're on a smart device. You don't want to miss out on the amazing weekly content that we release here at Tech with Emilia. So do that. And one thing that I learned when I was building my home lab, and I learned this the hard way, and I learned this way too late, is I didn't really know what was on my home lab. I had devices absolutely everywhere, and I didn't know what I had. So that's why you need to check this out. Now here's one thing that a lot of people who are setting up a server, setting up a network, forget about all of your devices, your networks, your servers, even cloud tech. It can get really hard to track all of this. You've got to try out Fathom. You can now easily map all of your servers and your business applications and see all of their dependencies, essentially how everything is connected to each other. And you can map services that are on premise. So your physical servers, your virtual servers, along with all of your services up in the cloud. And the great thing is that this service is completely agentless, which means you don't have to stick something on a server to get it to detect. Clicking on the link below, you'll get a free trial and then start getting a nice map of your entire network. If you spend a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, a little bit of money, you can get yourself a nice little setup where you can house all of your equipment in one location and then centrally manage all of it. And that's commonly what's called a home lab. It's a place where you can go and actually deploy a whole bunch of test gear for your own purposes of learning. Also gives you some benefits around your home network. You know, a lot of people are gonna have the ability to have a whole bunch of old tech laying around. And one of the great things about a home lab is that you can repurpose some of this old tech to do your own learning. You can actually have an old desktop computer and then stick some virtualization technology onto it and then run a whole bunch of virtual machines directly on that one computer. So you're giving that computer another life. Now, look, these are things that I learned after almost 20 years of playing around with home lab. It's been a long time. Different shapes and sizes. I started off small, I got bigger. And then as I was going throughout the years, I figured stuff out. Some because I made a mistake. And then other things I'm like, oh, I should have learned a lot more about this thing and then I had to go and redesign parts of my home lab to go and learn about this thing. One of the big things that I always do is plan for what you want to be building. Lack of planning is my first mistake. What is this thing for? What is the purpose of this thing? You have to think about the plan. What are you going to be building? What software are you gonna be running? What are you gonna be doing with this thing? How much money do you have to spend? Well, how much money do I have set aside to be able to go and invest and buy that thing? A lot of these questions are going to then determine the hardware that you're gonna go and buy. Now the next one. This is what happened to me. I had my space set up and I had all of my data. This is before I had a NAS, by the way. The hard drives failed. The hard drives died. And I thought to myself, huh, I should have had backups in place. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't think about. And so often people in a business focus and do a lot of stuff around backups. But then when it comes to their home environment, they don't think about backups. Now here's the thing you've got to think about is firstly, is your home lab completely for your learning and for your learning only? Because if it's just completely for your learning and you don't have like real life production data on your home lab, if data gets lost, not a big deal. You just have to go and rebuild it. Could take you a bit of time to rebuild it, which is quite annoying, but you know what? You haven't lost any precious data. But if your home lab is like a mix of your learning environment, but also you have some pretty important data in there, you probably wanna make sure that the thing is running well, that you do have backups set up, that you're setting up the backups, it's backing up the data to a different device, to a different location. Those backups are being sent offsite. You don't have to do this, but I bought two NASs. One of my first NASs was a Netgear NAS. So then what I did is I went and bought a second cheap Netgear NAS. And then I just had a simple replication job using R-Sync to actually copy the data from one NAS 
to another NAS. I could then grab that NAS and I could send it off site. But before I did have that NAS and I had all the data on there, I lost some stuff. So regardless if you've got production data or not, it's gonna take you a fair bit of time to get everything up and running again. So this is why I always recommend to have a backup. Because I've got a NAS, the NAS itself has a USB point. So you don't have to buy a second NAS like I did. Just plug in a USB hard drive into the front of it and then you run like a backup job to this external hard drive. Do not neglect security. Now I understand it's for learning. What's the point? I could just leave everything open. I can expose the whole thing out to the internet. If you've got some sort of a router that's maybe got some firewall software onto it, use it. Make sure that you're using strong and secure passwords, that all of your devices have got strong passwords. Change the default passwords. Make sure that the passwords are long and complex. Make sure that the passwords are different for every single one of your devices. Keep things updated. Keep your firmware updated. If you're running Windows, keep your Windows patches up to date. Use endpoint protection, antivirus, use security intrusion systems. Use all of this stuff on your home lab. You wanna make sure that it's secure as possible. Network segmentation is something that you've gotta have a think about. Do you want your network to be on the same network, your home network, to be on the same network as your home lab, right? You've got a home network where all of your main stuff sits, all of your data, your internet is all there, but then you've got your home lab. Do you want your home lab to be fully accessible between the two? Do you want some segmentation, some segregation between those two networks? You may want to consider that. Stick a router in the middle, that's routing traffic between the two, but then close off everything. Close off every single port unless you need a specific port open. Maybe you just need port 3389. Make it as difficult as possible for potential threats to spread throughout your network. More segmentation, the harder it is for things to jump from one device to another. Because the most secure home lab is the home lab that cannot be touched by the internet or by the outside world. Make sure that it's not exposed out to the internet. Don't do port forwarding and just, hello, I'm out on the internet to everybody. I've done a whole other video on this other service called Twingate, which you may want to check out. It's almost like a replacement for VPN. I think it's so much better than VPN. So if you really do need to go and access your home lab from uh, outside, from the internet, then you can do that using this service called Twingate. And don't overlook how the whole thing is powered up. Don't use El Cheapo power boards that you bought down from your local hardware store. Those $2 power boards that you have a little short and then things go pear-shaped. Think a little bit more corporate -y. Think about PDUs, power distribution units. Think about UPS units. I've got a UPS unit where I have all of my gear running into that. It actually gives me about 45 minutes worth of power in the event of a power outage. I mean, how important is your home lab for you? If you need it to stay up, if it's running core important equipment, then make sure that it's powered accordingly. Do you need everything on all the time? Because this is what I learned. First and foremost, I had all of this gear and I thought, hey, I'm just gonna leave it on all the time because that's just what you do. Well, really, if it's gonna be used only for certain things, only leave the essential stuff on. Everything else that doesn't need to be turned on, power it off. Well then when you need to use it, you just power it on, do your learning and then shut it down. Now as your thing grows and grows and grows, and this is something that I learned the hard way as well, is I lost track of all the stuff that I had. I had switches, routers, I had a whole bunch of virtual machines that were on different IPs. I had different versions of operating systems, different versions of everything. So I got into the good habit of keeping a sort of asset register in place or network scanning tools or monitoring tools, something that could scan my network and know what I had on my network, be able to see exactly the versions that I've got, the IPs, how everything is connected to each other, and then making sure that you keep it up to date so that any time you make a change on your network, you know exactly what is running and where it is. And this is where Fathom comes back in. If you wanna do a nice little map of your entire network, you can go and check that out. So that was some of the mistakes that I made when I started out and I learned these over the years and hopefully now you can now improve some of the things that you're doing in your home lab. As I said before, remember to go and smash that button or click on it or swipe on it and the bell so you don't miss out on anything. We release videos every single week on all things tech. And until next time, all the best and we'll see you then.